It is on Facebook right now, broadcast. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of We Are In This Together. And our guest today in this third episode, Dr. Adnan Jaber from uh, Dearborn. Welcome, Dr. Adnan, to the uh, studio. Uh, thank you, Adam. Thank you for having me. Uh, I wanted to start, of course, with introducing uh, Dr. Adnan. Adnan Jaber completed his Doctor of Philosophy in Clinical Psychology at the University of Detroit Mercy, where he also received his Master of Arts degree in Clinical Psychology in 2010. He completed his undergraduate degree in psychology at Lawrence Tech University in 2007. Adnan is currently working as a clinical psychologist at the Detroit Receiving Hospital. I hope I have current information, doctor. A contractual psychologist at the Great Lakes Psychology Group and is an adjunct professor at the University of Detroit Mercy. Dr. Adnan completed an APA accredited internship at the Aurora Mental Health Center in Colorado. His current research interests include moral judgment and reasoning and applying EEG technology to various questions and theories in moral psychology. He's also interested in consciousness and mind-body problem. He is currently in the process of preparing research with previous professors to utilize EEG technology as a tool to highlight the relationship between brain and consciousness and to understand bipolar disorder as failure of inner hemisphere inhibition. Uh, did I miss anything? Because this is a little bit an outdated uh, introduction, doctor. Uh, yeah, everything is correct, except that uh, I'm back with the state now. So I'm working now uh, full-time at the Center for Forensic Psychiatry. That's the only thing. Thank you. Welcome, doctor. And you're a friend of mine for a very long time and also a resident of the city of Dearborn, a father of two, uh, uh, and also active in a several nonprofit organizations, among which is uh, the Free Thinking Society. Uh, doctor, uh, we are in this together is a program that focuses on the uh, basically the the, epid, the pandemic that we're living today, but from a human experience perspective. We are getting a lot of information on the science and uh, medicine and health and uh, all the technicalities that come with quarantines and. Uh, the uh, uh, social isolation, etc. Uh, I wanted this as we we're living a history that is uncovering itself day by day, really, uh, with a very unknown future, uh, different predictions, but really we are uh, moving forward towards the unknown. I wanted to record this personal history uh, through these interviews. So we are today on Mar in March 23rd, 2020. And uh, we, it has been now, this is the second week in quarantine, right? Mm -hmm. Is it the second or third? Because I might also have lost the count. It is, uh, uh, this is the second week uh, of school being uh, closed. Yes. Yeah, and uh, so second week, right? Yeah. Right. And the big difference between last uh, week and this week and the week that is before it. Uh, so I want to ask you today, uh, what is your reflections so far uh, living this pandemic? Uh, it's been really uh, changing quite quickly, right? Uh, uh, today, as you said, this week has been different from last week, especially for residents of Michigan. Our governor has announced the executive order at the state level for everyone to stay home, right? Yes. Uh, so uh, I assume that's increasing a lot of people's anxieties and uh, uh, increasing a lot of people's questions and concerns. Uh, this is quite uh, unprecedented times we are in right now. Uh, and I agree with you, we are not, you and me, and I can speak <laughs> about, about myself, I'm not an expert in epidemics or epidemiology or vi virology or things like that. So what I am going to talk about, you and me today, is that how this is going to shape our lives uh, or is shaping our lives now and uh, how is it going to impact the future? 
So before we jump into that subject, uh, just as a, a psychiatrist, is it right if I say? Uh, psychologist. Psych- psychologist. Uh, you are you see patients in a in a continuous uh, f- form, um, and you also uh, do uh, look at the at, at what's going on with a different lens. Mm-hmm. What are some of the things? People are talking a lot about physical health, and of course, it's a priority to uh, protect ourselves from from viruses. But uh, what so so many times happen is that there is an underlying mental health that is kind of deprioritized till later like you know like as if we're saying we'll deal with the mental thing later mm-hmm. let's focus now on being safe uh what 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 are some of the things that you feel is uh, is is affecting us and what things can we do to actually take care of our mental health also during the situation uh, yes uh i uh, my experience was my at least from my own personal experience is that uh, a lot of patients or a lot of people are not worried about the physical aspect of the illness. Somehow there is some understanding that it's it's not going to be as as uh, intense as we, as we hear. Uh, a lot of people are worried about the implications of self isolation. Uh, implication of being, uh, you know, not allowed to go to their usual uh, and normal uh, daily lives. Uh, that's creating a lot of anxiety. You know, I think uh, uh, it has been a constant uh, conversation among not only patients, but also people, uh, co-workers and others about, you know, how we're going to survive being locked in for a few weeks, three weeks, four weeks. Uh, the uh, unknown also is is very uh, very pre- uh, uh, present in people's discussions. So what if we don't control this thing in two weeks, in three weeks, what are we going to do? Are we going to stay in this lock down and uh, isolation? Uh, so um, uh, a lot of people could be in denial about the physical aspect of the illness, like what could the illness do to ourselves? We have constant reminders, right, about it. But a lot of people seem to be uh, maybe sidestepping that because it speaks about own mortality and people don't want to deal with that sometimes. So they focus on things uh, are less uh, anxiety provoking, things that they think they can control. You know. Uh, as far as children are concerned, uh, we haven't really had much conversations with children about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, we kind of... Uh, like in my household, we try to uh, avoid really speaking about the subject so much with the kids. We uh, we don't really hear the news in front of them or we don't tell them uh, the news. Uh, we just describe things as general and we try to make uh, the best of the time together. Um, what, what advice would you give for uh, parents dealing with children? Should they open the conversation? And what questions should they ask? What things should they uh, really be aware of? Uh, I think the best way is uh, to see where the children are, right? So Mm -hmm. you don't have to ask specific questions. You can ask them if they have any questions. Uh, You know, probably no matter what you, how much we try to shield them, they hear. They heard already before the the schools closed. They hear their friends. Uh, They probably hear our conversations. So the best thing to do with children is depending on their level to say, you know, what are you hearing? You know, uh, do you have any questions for me? You know, uh, mm-hmm. depending on their level and uh, you go from there. Uh, I think the tendency we have is to shield our kids, you know, uh, uh, and sometimes we need to, uh, but sometimes uh, when we shield our kids, we might be actually not paying attention to subtle signs that they have a lot of questions, they have a lot of fears. And unfortunately, kids do not express their fears the way adults do. So a child will not come uh, to a parent or an adult and say, you know, I'm worried about this or that, on, or I'm preoccupied with this or that. Uh, basically, they show it differently, uh, and we might miss it. And then we might assume that, oh, they don't, they're don't not worried about it because they're not asking about it. Uh, but if you pay close attention, uh, you could see it, uh, the way they're playing, the way they are uh, uh, sleeping or not sleeping, the way they are 
uh, being active or not active, you know, being hyper or not, uh, if they were drawn or this or that. So you, there are a lot of indications that children are struggling. And uh, uh, I, I encourage parents to uh, take the time and to ask if, if their children have anything on their minds, uh, if they have any questions. Uh, what do they know? You know, you don't have to say much. Like, what do you know? What did you hear? Do you have any questions for me? And try, depending on their developmental level, to speak to them, you know. So, mm -hmm. for instance, you know, my kids, if my daughter is 10, I speak to her differently than I speak to my six or seven year old son, uh, depending on their even uh, proclivities, right? You know, some, uh, some, some kids are verbal, so you can actually have a discussion with them. They're, they're quite good with it. Some kids are more into physical activity, so you can just do some kind of activity and play with them. And as you play with them, you might actually try to hear them up and see what concerns they have. So I really, I really uh, don't advise, I advise against uh, completely shielding the kids. We need to protect them from 24-7 uh, news all the time, and right? Uh, yes. But at the same time, we need to make sure that we're listening to them. And wherever they are at, we can talk to them based on their questions and their level. Yes. Thank you. Uh, what are some of the things? So since this is really about uh, personal uh, experience more mm -hmm. than expertise, and I know that you've been interviewed before mm -hmm. as an expert on this subject on uh, uh, Hassan uh, production and uh, Al Nedwa mm -hmm. uh, Free Thinking Society. But uh, this uh, broadcast really will focus more on like personal I think so okay. personally like how have you been spending the time uh, differently with your with your family how is what are some of the changes in your life that you feel uh, some of the positives some of the negatives mm -hmm. uh, well uh, I like that <laughs> the, the focus on the uh, personal uh, kind of like uh, documenting or storytelling of how we're uh, uh, how we're dealing with the situation as it unfolds. Uh, I have to deal with the situation uh, 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 differently, personally, because I still have to go to work. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm from a few of the persons, uh, I still have to go to work because, uh, uh, like, even today's uh, 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 order to stay home doesn't apply to us, you know, so we have to continue to go to work. Uh, so I have to continue to be at the job, but also make sure that. I'm coming home in the afternoon, right? It's kind of like a weird situation I'm in because everything is closed, but I'm like the father who continues to go out and work and come back. So it's kind of like trying to tell my kids like, yeah, everything is now, you know, we have to stay home, but I still have to go to work. So personally, it's uh, it's been uh, uh, difficult a little mm -hmm. bit to deal with it. Uh, I have to deal with the fears of people around me, right? Because I'm still, I still go out. Mm -hmm. I work at a hospital. So uh, there is some risk for me personally uh, and for the patients, definitely. So I have to be aware of uh, the risk I present to my kids and my family. So that's also on my mind from, from like, mm -hmm. I don't want them to get sick, right? right. Uh, but at the same time, I understand that I, I, I have to be at my job and I have to be there. Uh, for many reasons, right? Uh, I uh, I think uh, uh, this time is really difficult for families. So my family, ha you know, like uh, have been, you know, home all day, right? So I come home at, at the end of the day, you know, uh, and then, you know, like you can't do anything, right? Except stay home. So they're already staying home, you know, and <laughs> you have to work on you being tired, but also like they want to be out and, you want to explain why we can't go out, you know, to the slide or to the swings or this or that, mm -hmm. uh, or why we can go eat ice cream or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's been really tough uh, having to be in two positions, you know, like everything is shut down and uh, uh, mm -hmm. and people are, you know, as you said, quarantining themselves and staying home. But I haven't uh, during work hours. So I, uh, I, uh, I think that's a challenge. Uh, personally, I feel like uh, uh, my anxiety has been good level-wise, mm -hmm. you know, but there are some worries. Uh, mm -hmm. I, uh, I don't deny it, uh, you know. Uh, other no. than that, go ahead. 
Sorry. You you being a person who goes to work, come back, is, were there any routines that changed in your life other than not taking the kids out, for example, to certain places? Are there other routines? Is there a major change in your life in terms of routines? Uh, you know, uh, I would say, you know, like uh, it's, it's disruptive in the sense that uh, let me like say it, it would have been more disruptive if I was like an outgoing person <laughs> in a sense, <laughs> right? Uh, I, I, I work a lot. So personally, I feel like, uh, you know, uh, it just, it has been something I had to adjust to, but it wasn't like a, a kind of dramatic adjustment, you know, because I used to go to work and then see patients also in the afternoon. Now I'm seeing my patients online, the afternoon patients, trying to mm -hmm. protect them and protect myself. But it hasn't been... Um, uh, a, a dramatic shift uh, for me, right? It's not a big adjustment, but yet it's there is a sense in your mind that, like, it's not a choice, right? You're staying home not by choice now, like you're asked to stay home, or uh, so it's it's kind of like a human psychology, right? Mm -hmm. You know, we don't we don't like to be told what to do, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, and uh, people usually don't like to go out, and we're forcing our kids to go go play out, but now. They want to go out and want them to stay in. So this is a, like when you deal with the psychology of human beings. Right. Yeah. So it hasn't been a, a big adjustment to me, but it's still still a big adjustment because you know, like you know that, like it, I'm gonna be honest. Like, like you, I look outside and things do not seem the same, right? Like you right. can see, you can feel it, like like in the air, you know, around you, around yeah. how empty the street is. It feels so, a little eerie. Yeah, walking the same streets. But there is a sense of, uh, of, of vacuum. There is a sense of uh, um, unusual silence in the streets. Uh, there is, you feel the streets themselves have anxiety. You know, you feel that uh, the Good trees one. and the... <laughs> yes. <laughs> don't uh, get too poetic right here. <laughs> but, um, um, you know, uh, this uh, uh, crisis that we're living through... And every time uh, the country goes through a crisis, somehow it reveals a layer of uh, heroes in our society. Uh, in September 11, it highlighted uh, first responders mm -hmm. uh, who sacrificed, many of them sacrificed their lives uh, uh, doing their jobs in the, in the middle of uh, extreme danger, uh, trying to save others. And in this uh, situation, uh, health workers like yourself and uh, ER doctors and nurses and the, on the front lines, uh, you know, they are really the uh, true heroes of our society today. We don't know. Uh, I think that we will look at them differently uh, ever after, uh, after, after this crisis. Mm -hmm. uh, also, um, not to, uh, and I think the more time we spend in quarantine, uh, the more it's going to be highlighted as, te as teachers. Uh, teachers mm -hmm. who now have to deal with their children at home, and also with uh, with you know also uncertainty about their their work. At the same time, working so hard, managing thirty other students uh, virtually, and giving them work and giving them homework through tools and technology that they've uh, never really had enough time because of their overwhelmed schedules. They've never had time to be comfortable with. So now they are forced to really get comfortable with technology and go beyond uh, their requirements. Like it's, they feel the responsibility of the education of these kids, no matter what the situation is in the country. And that's uh, also an amazing uh, uh, level of heroes that we will hopefully appreciate uh, a lot more after we get out of this uh, situation. Um, any comments about that? Uh, I agree. You know, I think that uh, we uh, we we don't uh, usually appreciate uh, things uh, in our lives, you know, uh, or people in our lives. You mentioned uh, healthcare workers, emergency room workers, nurses, uh, all people on the front lines. You know, everywhere uh, they have been really, you know, the unsung heroes. Uh, uh, probably uh, not recognized and always taken for granted. Uh, I think that uh, that there is a sense that there are that the priorities have to shift, right? 
Yes. There is a sense that, you know, like uh, there are things in our communities and societies that we have been taking for granted and that 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 really important, you know, family, you know, uh, science, uh, community. Uh, what I, I, I think is uh, really important, you know, out of a crisis, what do we do, right? Because this is a crisis. We are in a crisis right now. We are in a, in a time uh, of upheaval and uncertainty, as you mentioned. Uh, I was listening to something a couple of days ago, a, a, a Buddhist teacher, yes. in a, a presentation, and he said, maybe it's a, a bit of a blanket statement about the West, but he said, in the West, there is, uh, oh my God, panic, panic, everything is out of control. And he goes, eh, for Buddhists and probably Eastern, you know, Conf Confucius and Taoism, other uh, uh, traditions, uh, uh, it's uh, it's gonna be like uh, uh, peace, peace. Everything is out of control. Uh, mm. uh, the sense that he was talking about is that uh, we need to learn how to uh, tolerate uncertainty and not to be in control. Uh, you know, and um, uh, right now it's a time where people really are struggling with that, right? We have uh, kind of lived a, a life, right? Everything is in place. We have uh, we have everything that we can predict up, uh, on in terms of uh, uh, our daily lives, you know, schools, as you mentioned, teachers, uh, 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 hospitals, government, this or that. Uh, uh, right now, this is being challenged, you know, and uh, uh, we're losing some of this control. Uh, how we respond to it, you know, is gonna is gonna also speak to to whether we actually uh, uh, learn something from this crisis and and, and use it in the future, or whether mm -hmm. uh, you know uh, uh, this crisis kind of like arretna, uh, kind of like exposed us, right? Uh, yeah. And we could not really uh, uh, show a way of coping and getting out of it. Right, definitely. Uh, doctor, I don't understand something. Maybe you can explain it to me. I understand food hoarding, but I don't understand the toilet hoarding, <laughs> the toilet paper <laughs> hoarding. Uh, you what's, know, uh, what's up with that? Uh, I don't have that instinct. Am I you, missing something? Am I? <laughs> you, you know, to uh, to lighten the mood, you know, I, I, I think I mentioned this to people yesterday, like Maslow's hierarchy of needs, you know, where... Uh, the physiological needs are, are are number one because you have to meet food and and shelter. I mean, food right. and, uh, and and safety. But then the first one is toilet paper now. So, uh, uh, <laughs> yes, uh, uh, you know, people are quite irrational. To be honest with you, you know, uh, 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 fear begets fear, right? So uh, you see people uh, uh, on the news uh, running and uh, uh, hoarding food. But then uh, somehow uh, some people, maybe it started in Australia, I'm not sure, started hoarding, and I don't want to put Australia on the... Uh, on the stereotyping on the map. No, some, some country, it started, you know, a mm -hmm. few weeks ago, and it was a joke among people that they ran out of um, toilet paper. Uh, but then it became a news, and it's kind of like people got scared, right? Uh, people wanted to uh, kind of uh, be on top of it. So, uh, and besides, this is one thing, fear gets fear. Also, people like to feel a sense of control, right? So I, I can't control this whole thing, but I can control uh, this thing, for instance, and I go and hoard toilet paper. So it becomes a sign of, or an indication of you exerting some sort of control over the situation. You know, mm -hmm. uh, you can't control the situation, so you buy, buy stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it doesn't have to be rational, uh, because as you said, uh, I can see people hoarding maybe sanitizers, hand sanitizers. Also, I don't agree with it, but I can see the rationale behind it. But to hoard toilet paper, especially for a respiratory illness. Mm -hmm. uh, so again, you know, it, it must be also, uh, you know, the social media aspect of the coverage and how people get anxiety when they hear news. But also control. You know, there are mm -hmm. some things people doing to control their situation. Okay, uh, I think so there is so there is nothing wrong with me uh, not having uh, excessive amount of toilet paper. I'm normal. Uh, well, now, but maybe in the future, because this will be a very <laughs> scarce commodity. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, yeah, no, you're, you're quite normal, right? Yeah. How, how about the gun hoarding? Is that is that natural? Yes, I think yes. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, I, I'm not encouraging it, but I think people what, people are scared, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, to be honest with you, you asked me how am I handling it. I ask myself these questions. You know, I'm a father. Mm -hmm. uh, you are a father and you might relate to this. You have a family. Uh, a lot of our people have uh, family and loved ones. And you ask yourself, what if this whole thing, uh, you know, kind of like the social contract that holds everything together falls apart, you know? And, and I, I, I'm not saying it will be, but I'm saying, you know, in our uh, weakest and most vulnerable moments, we think about these things, right? So mm -hmm. some people might take it to the extreme, you know, and they want to protect themselves. They want to protect their loved ones. And uh, again, a sense of control. You know, I go, like the, the act of going to the, whatever, you, wherever you buy your guns, probably here in Kroger or something, <laughs> I'm not sure. But you go there and you purchase something, you you cannot accomplish it, right? And you, you cannot put a check mark next to it. And then mm -hmm. uh, you create a, a, a sense of maybe more sec false security to yourself, you know? Um, and there is another reason, probably it has to do with the nature of the United States and how people uh, look at gun, mm -hmm. and, uh, the, you know, so it's kind of like a more historical reason, which I'm not going to go into it. Right. I, I think it's pecu it's more peculiar to the United States than any other country. Yeah. And correct me if I'm wrong. I haven't heard a lot of uh, increase in gun sales outside the United States. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, yeah. Is it is it revealing to something? I mean... Some people are assuming that the fall of, uh, if, if things get worse and the social contract falls down, that it's going to resort to barbarism, it's going to resort to crime. And I feel that uh, that's not necessarily the case. But I see that any possibility, it, it can stir fear, just mm -hmm. the possibility or the probability of it. You know, in Lebanon, uh, we had a civil war for over 25 years, and during uh, the most, the worst year of civil war, when there was no government uh, practically, um, and there was no law enforcement uh, practically, there weren't uh, a, a, dr a drastic increase in crime. Mm -hmm. uh, people did not resort to barbarism. They did not resort to uh, the law of the forest, you know, uh, there were still uh, social structures in place. And that's how I like to think of a human society in general, that even if uh, governments fall, that we have enough values and morals to hold us, uh, uh, to hold us together. But enough on that. And I want to go back to some personal questions. What is an inspiration from what's going on today? And how do you feel that uh, if we come out of this or when we come out of this, what has changed in you? What, what is something that you feel has changed in you, maybe to the better or, you know, something that you have, uh, it ha you know, a new habit or a new understanding or a new way of looking at things? Uh, so the first part of your question is about uh, inspiration. Yes. What is inspirational? from our situation today? Uh, I think, as you said earlier, uh, you know, uh, I think it's uh, looking at the whole world and see the reaction. Uh, there is a, a sense of uh, uh, community that uh, is kind of heartwarming to see, uh, uh, even in each country, how, uh, how they are uh, uh, kinda kind of uh, managing the uh, the crisis and a humanitarian in a humanitarian way uh, you know from china to europe to to all these places uh, people are stepping up you know um, what really uh, uh, kind of affected me in a personal way when i uh, saw the um, chinese uh, 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 medical aids arriving to places like italy uh, uh, most places that have been really affected. I mean, this is coming from a country that was the epicenter of the crisis, and they're still struggling with it. But I kind of gave, gave gave me a warm 
glow inside or a warm thing feeling like like even in this darkest moment, uh, uh, and then the Chinese decided to write something on it. The Chinese government, or kind of like uh, nothing religious, nothing. It's more universal. Like it, it speaks to how we are all coming from the same strand. We might be different, like a wave, but we're all from the same source, or something like that. Uh, so that is was inspirational. You know, uh, people uh, uh, in China or in Italy not going to their houses in weeks. Medical people, doctors, nurses. Uh, being on the front line, uh, uh, you know, you know, I go to my job, but I come back to my family, you know. But these people haven't left their places; they're taking risks. Uh, I mean, uh, in China, there was four thousand people who died. Their medical personnel, including doctors and nurses, because they were on the front line trying to deal with the situation. Uh, as you said earlier, with Sam, I think uh, no, we, we are. Uh, there, there is a sense that we are. Uh, uh, not only moral, but we also have a sense of uh, connectedness, you know, and uh, you could point to all the things that show that oh, under extreme stress and difficulties, we might resort to barbarism, but actually it's showing that at least for now, we're, we're resorting to community and we are uh, kind of supporting uh, each other, you know, even though you see signs here or there. So that's, that's, that's inspirational to see, to, to see these signs and, uh, on display right now yeah and what's something that is uh, you feel this changed on in you that you're not gonna go uh, after we pass through this i mean i'm sure we have a lot of things that uh, that is going to be different about us but we're gonna wash our hands better that's for sure <laughs> <laughs> but, yes what are some of the more uh, you know uh, meaningful things that we're gonna come out of this well uh, i keep uh talking about values right you know for me uh, part of like has have been a, a kind of like a, a, a what do you call it a mission uh, to kind of clarify my values you know always have been working on what do i care about you know the things that i really value in life and you know and sometimes uh, you know it's not a, a complete product you don't finish it i think a shifting of priorities and rearrangement of the priorities uh, might come out of it. To be honest with you, right now, I'm still thinking about it. Uh, and, you know, uh, it's, it might seem cliche, but, you know, realizing the importance of family, realizing the importance of friends and, uh, and, uh, and uh, just chit-chatting with people, right? Like we were doing right now. Uh, you know, things that you take for granted uh, are becoming more like appearing to me like, wow, they are really important that, 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 that I value them. Uh, I'm still in the process of, uh, of, as I said to you, coming to terms with everything that will come out of this. But I think in every one of us, there will be a change, whether it's cataclysmic or simple, but there will be a rearrangement of values and uh, uh, and uh, you know goals maybe right uh, uh, for one for me i used to be very skeptical of social uh, networks and i didn't like them in terms of you know maybe you and me talked about it a lot like what what they do and i still have my critiques about them but oh man how much they help during these times you know can you imagine how we were gonna survive without talking to our families and our friends and uh, and having this venue to connect and share with each other. Yeah, definitely. Thank you, Adnan, for that. Uh, we're gonna go to a little bit less uh, formal subject, and it's a habit in ending this uh, sure. uh, program. Unless you have other things, you have other topics you'd like to uh, touch upon before we get to this last section. Uh, no, I mean, uh, I, I think if, if, if parents are watching us and they really want to listen to something, you know, that talks about the anxiety per se, as you said, more kind of... Uh, yes, uh, please. Your message to the parents in our community, especially that you have, you're dealing with real cases on daily basis. Mm -hmm. Please, this is your message to the community. Go ahead. Yes. The, uh, uh, the message is that, you know, uh, 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 especially parents who have kids, uh, you know, uh, anxiety and stress... Uh, is inevitable in this situation. But the, how you manage it as a parent will have a, a very uh, 
deep impact on uh, your kids. So I'm not saying that you should not be anxious, but you should be able to deal with it uh, uh, in a way, you know, that allows you to be present more and in the moment. Uh, you know, uh, I think that being in the moment and present is the most important thing right now. We cannot control what's going to happen in the future. Right now, we don't have, and we never have control, actually. We cannot keep thinking about the past. Be in the moment with your kids. Try to listen to them. Uh, if you get really anxious, you know, uh, and, uh, and really stressed out, step out. Stop, stop listening to news, you know, and don't be 24-7 checking your phone. And things are not going to change, like, in, within a minute, you know. Uh, so take care of your health as a parent. You can't take care of other people's health unless you are healthy so make sure you're sleeping well you're eating well try to exercise as much as you can within the bounds of quarantine right now and be there for your kids it's uh, if it's rough on you right now as an adult imagine how rough it is on a child not knowing what's going on uh, and not being able to verbalize their fears so take care of yourself and um, as parents and uh, listen to your kids you know and uh, just listen. You don't have to tell them everything. See what they know. So. Thank you, Adnan. So uh, when I put a structure and a schedule for my kids and they resisted, how should I, uh, how should I get them used to this structure, this uh, you know, feeling that uh, usually that when they're home, they're on a break, you know, mm -hmm. uh, but now they're in home and there is, it feels like school. So uh, any recommendations in that sense? Yes, and I agree with you. Uh, it's been also a difficult thing at my household because I try to tell your kids that it's school, but not you're not going to school. So uh, I think it has to be uh, kind of like, uh, uh, like always like repeated over and over that this is not a break. Uh, you know, this is school, and you have to explain as much as you can because of what's happening. We have to continue learning from school. So this is what I told my kids, uh, that this is school time. So every night is a, is a school night, even though you're not going. So you go to bed at the same time, you wake up at the same time. They're going to resist that, definitely, because a child cannot cognitively understand this, right? But you can actually start, you know, kind of doing a rewards, simple rewards, right? You're going to like a, a behavioral uh, uh, reinforcement for things they do. They go back. You know, you're familiar with that as, as an educator, you know, that, you know, the, the, the importance of uh, behavioral uh, reinforcement and uh, reinforcing behaviors that we like to see in our kids so they can repeat. But I think a lot of kids, you know, uh, structure is very important. I, I'm glad you mentioned that because it's an, it's an antidote against anxiety, the routine, you know, and I want pe 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 people to to take this into account that it's okay to be flexible, you know, it's okay to give them extra time on the TV or iPad because we live in extraordinary times right now. You're not going to control everything. So parents, don't beat yourselves up because your kids are doing a little bit more iPad or a little bit more TV or this or that. But try as much as you can to create a routine. It doesn't have to be the same routine that I do is at your home. As long as there is a routine that can create a sense of normalcy in their lives. That's what's needed, you know, uh, because also routine, you know, help uh, kind of fight the anxiety and reduce the anxiety. So whatever works for you, there's no uh, one, uh, uh, one answer for all. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So whatever works for you and for your kids, you should do. So. Thank you, uh, doctor. A uh, few last questions before we end. Uh, sure. I'm going to ask you uh, for these items, uh, when is, what is the last thing that you mm -hmm. have, uh, for example, read? And then what do you recommend for others? So a uh, book. What's the last book you read? And what's a book that you recommend for others? Well, actually, uh, I've been reading a book called Listening to Fear. Mm -hmm. Did you get the title? Listening to Fear. Listening to fear. It's by uh, a psychologist. Uh, it talks about uh, you know how we as adults kind of sometimes forget the language that kids speak, uh, especially when they talk about fear. And uh, since we forget this, we tend to maybe minimize or miss things that 
could indicate that a child is uh, is um, struggling with. Uh, I really like this book. It kind of like tells you about how kids cope, you know, uh, uh, developmentally and also in times of uh, tragedies, be it 9/11 or where we go right, where we're going in right now. So that's a good book that I'm reading right now. Mm-hmm. If and you, what's, uh, what's a book that you recommend? I recommend actually. I was thinking about it, and I I, I finished it before this one. It's called The Tao of Pooh. Mm. You know, Winnie the Pooh. Yes. And Taoism, it's a school, uh, an Eastern philosophy from China. From China, people might not <laughs> like this right now. Uh, it's a Tao, uh, as T-A-O, it's a you know, uh, mm-hmm. school. Uh, yeah. I really, uh, 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 this is, uh, he uses the character of Winnie the Pooh. I don't know if you're familiar with this character, but Winnie the Pooh is kind of like this guy or this uh, bear who, uh, who was very simple in a sense like he, he he goes along with things he doesn't complicate things you know uh, he looks at things kind of like as they are he doesn't make a fuss uh, that wasn't uh, uh, talks about the uncarved block like sometimes we create complexity out of things that we need to keep them simple d- 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 like to keep things in their, in their nature you know uh, so it's a good mm-hmm. book because he uses the characters he's an American author he uses the characters from Winnie the Pooh and the stories Kind of like, for instance, Rabbit, who's always on the run, you know, uh, he misses things because he's always on the run trying to do this or that. He doesn't slow down. Or the owl, a, 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 a symbol of intelligence and asking questions all the time, but he will struggle if he doesn't have answers, right? And he needs to know always why, and which is something important. But kind of the idea with Taoism and the Winnie the Pooh is that we have to be comfortable sometimes with simplicity. With things that they are, you know, uh, with the nature of things, you know, how they are in their nature. Mm-hmm. So I really recommend the, the book. It's a, it's not a big book. It's maybe two hundred pages, and it's it goes in a very sahel uh, al How do you want to say it? Uh, mm-hmm. It's not complex. You know, it, it explains very difficult uh, concepts in a very uh, simple terms and uh, easy to understand. Thank you. Uh, what's uh, a song that you? Uh... You know that's I mean that's that you remember that you've listened to la- lastly, and what song do you recommend uh, for others? Well, to be honest with you, I uh, I uh, I don't recommend a single song, you know. But for instance, for my Arabic friends or people who sing or Lebanese friends who sing to, listen to Arabic songs, I've been I think for me I always listen to Fairuz. It's very calming to me, mm-hmm. kind of very. Her, her voice, <laughs> you know, I, I think right, ta- right now, and if you're anxious, you know, whatever works for you, you should do whatever you, uh, you know, wh- whatever brings this memory inside of you, this feeling, you should do it. So I, but for me, Fairuz works miracles uh, and classical music for me, at least, you know, like when I'm in the car, you know, coming from a whole uh, long day at work, I, I, I play some classical music, uh, you know, uh, so I don't have a specific song, but I would say, you know, uh, whatever makes you feel happy and uh, uh, kind of like nostalgic, even just listen to it. You know, what's the last song that you that you uh, listen to? Uh, you know, I uh, try to remember because I was in the car coming here. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, Shaban Abdul Rahim. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Are you embarrassed I, to say yeah. that, Doctor Adnan? I'm sorry. Are you embarrassed to say that you the last song was Shabbat no, Abdurrahim? You know, I don't feel embarrassed by these things. I think people should should be allowed to listen to what they have. You know, you know, I Allah uh, uh, Hamu. Yeah, yeah, I'm just kidding. But no, uh, it's okay. No, I I don't think because you know what, honestly, sometimes uh, and that's gonna look like nerdy. I listen to a lot of uh, podcasts while I'm on the car. Cool. Uh, so what's the last? Podcast, what are you listening to right now, as far as uh, well? There is a, 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 a podcast called Shrink Rap. <laughs> He's a psychologist, uh, and he was rap a... like R A P. Yeah, Shrink Rap. Yeah, from rap. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm trying to get the name. Uh, he was uh, talking to a philosopher, uh, kind of stoic philosopher from England. Actually, mm-hmm. they were talking about how to deal with the um, uh, with the COVID situation uh, from a philosophical perspective. You know, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I, uh, there is also, uh, I think, uh, a lot of good podcasts right now. Uh, and most of these people who, uh, like uh, a podcast uh, uh, 
uh, presenters uh, have shifted their podcast to focus on the COVID, you know, how to deal with it, uh, things like that. So I really encourage people to listen to it, you know, because it's kind of like calming and gives you a lot of information. Uh, there is this guy also, uh, Mindscape. Uh, I'm sure you're familiar with the guy, Sean Carroll. He's a physicist. Oh. It's an app, isn't it? I'm sorry? It's an app. Well, Mindscape is, is, uh, is based, this is a theoretical physicist, and he has a lot of um, uh, good uh, uh, episodes about uh, physics, time, the universe. But lately, he's also been talking to people about COVID and uh, the community, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, he, he had a good book about the theory of everything. Mm -hmm. I think, I think you will know the author. So there's a lot of podcasts, you know, I can send you a list of all of them, but I, I, I always listen to them while I'm driving because, you know, coming home, it's very hard to listen to anything, so. Great. Uh, film, Doctor, what is the last film that you've seen and what a film do you recommend? I, <laughs> it was Jumanji 2. <laughs> yeah. A father of two. Mm -hmm. Yes, I uh, I watch it with my kids and my family. Uh, I really encourage that. Also, I, you asked me what families can do. Family night, you know, or movie night, sorry, is very good right now. You know, uh, uh, God bless Netflix and Amazon Prime, <laughs> all these things. Right now, you know, we need that, right? Uh, so uh, I watched it with my kid. It was really light, you know. Kids laughed, have a, had a good laugh. So something like that. So th this was my last movie, <laughs> Jumanji mm -hmm. 2, you know. What do you is there a film that you rec you recommend? Is there a film that I recommend right now? Uh, I mean, I've been really doing more shows than movies. Mm -hmm. You know, you do a lot of movies. <laughs> so, what shows do you recommend? I I really recommend a show that I watched uh, probably finished a couple of days ago, uh, Russian Doll. Mm -hmm. As a doll, I don't know if you watched this before. No, Russian, Russian Doll. 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 D O L L. Mm -hmm. uh, it's about, uh, and I'm not giving the uh, the show if I say say it. It's this uh, woman who, on her birthday, she experiences her death, but she keeps coming back to the same death and re-experiencing it again. Mm -hmm. It's a good show, I think, philosophically speaking, and it's very pertinent right now because I think uh, she probably will have to deal with a lot of her fears and anxieties and traumas, you know. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have this. We cannot go and repeat things. So mm -hmm. maybe it's a good thing to know, especially in these times, that that maybe we don't have a chance to repeat our lives and go back. So mm -hmm. what do we what do we do with the life we have right now? And so it's a good show. I really encourage it. You know, I encourage people to watch it. All right. Next question is a game. Is there a game that uh, you know you recommend or that you uncovered, you discovered? Um, a game that can be played by family or by adults? Well, any board games, you know, I, I think uh, uh, whatever, you know, uh, like I I play Uno with my kids, you know, <laughs> uh, it's, it's called Uno Attack, right? I don't know if you heard of it. No. It's like Uno, but it's, uh, it's uh, based like, a, uh, it's kind of like a, a, a small box. It has the cards. So, mm -hmm. You get cards randomly. It's funny, you know. So if you draw two, if you're familiar with Uno, instead mm -hmm. of taking two cards, you click on the machine and it might give you ten cards. Mm -hmm. So it's a long game, you know. But it's the, the whole game is gonna center around the fun, the family, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. uh, any game that works. Uh, I play, you know, Monopoly with my kids, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, but you can make up anything with your kids, you know, mm -hmm. like. Uh, I, my, my son asked me, like, you want to play something he makes up, like an uh, army base or this, whatever he wants to. I, I, I just join in sometimes whenever I can. So I think whatever your kids want to, you know, it doesn't have to be like a specific game. But there are a lot of uh, board games, you know, over there, you know, uh, that you can play, you know. Yeah. For adults, it's a different situation, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, I, uh, I don't know. Do you yeah. have any recommendation for adult games? No, let's keep it PG here. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, don't get me wrong. <laughs> uh, okay, we finished the show. So there's a, a habit that we uh, there's a habit that we do at the end with e with every guest uh, is that we ask you to add a question to the list of questions mm -hmm. that every guest will be asked. 
Mm-hmm. And I'm going to ask you a uh, question that you left us last time, mm-hmm. which is what was the last uh, epiphany or aha moment that you had in your life? Oh, that's uh, kind of personal. <laughs> no, uh, well, you know, maybe I shouldn't go in detail, but uh, I can say that, uh, uh, I mean, I don't, personally, I don't believe that, you know, for me, I don't arrive at things like that, you know, like it doesn't, I wish I have those things where a light bulb comes in or comes out, <laughs> like, oh, God, now I see it, you know. Uh, things uh, kind of like, I always think about things and maybe the, uh, after a long time of incubation, <laughs> like a virus, <laughs> I start showing symptoms. Yeah. <laughs> Language of 2020. Uh-huh. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but, uh, you know, like, uh, as I said earlier, you know, the, uh, the ep- if you want to call it epiphany, I think the priorities, the shifting of priorities and rearrangement of them is is something that is going to be on my mind and, uh, you know, what's important and, uh, you know, where are my values, where do I align myself and, uh, you know, uh, my worry is that when we come out of this, are, am I going to go back to the same way of life or I should keep reminding myself, right? You know, like, what should I do to not forget that this is our situation? And, and uh, you know, because people can go back to business as usual. So I don't have an epiphany that I can share except that uh, I'm, I'm kind of rearranging or kind of like sifting through my priorities and values. But my question to the, to the next guest, because you asked that this is a tradition. Right, that, and you'll answer it yourself too. Yes, yes. What and I ask is what what are you gonna do to make sure that you know that uh, that whatever right now is happening in your mind and uh, the questions you have, the priorities and and your values, uh, how you are you gonna make sure you're not gonna forget about it once we are out of this uh, 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 crisis? You know, because we all do that, right? You know, like, oh, you know, I learned my lesson once I go into this or that. But, you know, once life goes back to normal and uh, uh, we got back to our normal rhythm, what's going to be, what's going to be your, your view? How are you going to deal with things, right? Mm-hmm. So how are you, I'm going to frame it again, how are you going to, uh, utilize the insights that you think you have right now about what's going on and apply them to your life instead of completely forgetting about it once things settle down. How are you going to utilize the insights that you have right now uh, in, in, the, in your life after the crisis passes? Yes, right? Because I keep hearing a lot of people, including me, including a lot of people, that this is an unprecedented time and these things will it caused me to change my view, and these are the important things. Well, it's one thing to say it when you are in a crisis, but once you're out of it, what are you going to do to make sure that you know you 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 are going to live up to the things you have decided to change in your life? Uh, you, you said I have to answer it. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> that's why I'm asking people, <laughs> but they don't have an answer. Uh, I think part of it, you know, is. Uh, uh, you know, I'm going to ask people who I trust, like my friends, for instance, maybe, maybe, including you, that once, once we are out of this, let's be uh, accountable about it, right? Like to each other, you know, like, so now let's talk about it. Let's not forget it. So I might tend to forget it because I want to go back to my life. So I would ask my friends, for instance, as I will do that to them, just remind me, right? Remind right. me what did I say? So you'll start answering my phone calls? <laughs> that's, that's something I'll work on, right? <laughs> just, just get the virus out and we'll talk about it. <laughs> no, seriously, you know, it's, it's going to be something that I, I'm not sure if it's going to happen with some for a lot of people mm-hmm. because right now we are in a crisis mode, you know, but I think this is very important because 
it seems like our priorities have really been right. And this crisis has showed that we have to change them. Uh, so, you know, uh, I'll give you an example before we leave. Uh, like, I, uh, like, I've never questioned, because I love soccer, you know me, why soccer players get paid that much, because I enjoy that. But now I'm thinking, like, really, do we really have to pay that much, right? You know, we have scientists that barely make money, you know, and uh, uh, the doctors and this or that, you know, uh, not, not only scientists and doctors, uh, any kind of fields, right, you know, could have potential benefit to the humanity, you know, uh, we should think about that, right, you know, and like, maybe right now, like, I don't care, you know, I think we should uh, shift priorities. Right. So that's a good question to have, right? You know? Right. Right. Uh, you know what? It's an amazing thought. You know, to if uh, let's say that uh, they develop a vaccine, and you know, right now they're working on treatments, but also the more more importantly is the vaccine that will prevent this from happening. And let's say that we come out of this, uh, you know, in a in a month or two, with the least uh, with the least damages uh, possible. It's not really a bad thing that happened. You know, if you think about it, that that I mean, of course, it's a it's a it's a it's a crisis, it's a negative thing. But mm. in terms of the value that is going to uh, uh, the social value, the emotional value, the, the the changes in social structure, you're talking about uh, forcing everyone to stay together at home, getting to know each other, deal with each other, entertain each other, know each other's anxieties, fears, desires, and thoughts and feelings, and stopping all the sports, all these thousands of hours that are usually wasted on sports spectation from one season to the other, from one sport to the other, almost unending. Uh, that always frustrated me. And uh, uh, the uh, stopping all these uh, events, you know, that uh, that... Uh, usually people, if they have three kids and three kids have three different activities, they're pretty much are full-time workers uh, to deliver their kids from one uh, game to the other, which I also felt that it is kind of overdone. Mm -hmm. If I have a kid who is five years old playing soccer and I have to keep traveling uh, from one state to another for him to play, I think that's a little bit overdone, you know? I mean, he's five years old. He needs a ball, a few friends, and play in the backyard. Uh, you know, it's a little bit taken, it's overdone, I think, a little bit. Um, in terms of the value of this time, the value of time that is invested in sports spectations and uh, kids' uh, activities, which is an industry in itself. So let's not be naive. There is an industry behind it. Uh, it's good for the kids. I think it's overdone. Um, uh, there, there aren't much focus on crafts and arts at home, mm -hmm. on spending quality time. Uh, so all this is changing, you know, eating out, not cooking, uh, also taking care of personal hygiene. I mean, it seems like a very good lesson for humanity. I mean, if we were to spend money to get these lessons through, it would have costed trillions of dollars and it's impossible to get these lessons through. But it's, it's a very good lesson from nature. Also, um, understanding evolution, understanding uh, science, the importance of science, the unimportance of politicians in front of science, the, you know, the, the uh, recoming of expertise, the importance of experts, uh, uh, and how politicians have to refer back to experts, and uh, how all these wars and polarization and political strife seems senseless uh, in front of the human uh, challenges. So all these lessons, sorry, I went on and on, but to tell you that all these lessons came out of this. If we can minimize the damages, I think it's a, it's, it will turn into a positive step for uh, humanity. With that, doctor, thank you very much for uh, being with us uh, and for uh, your time. And this is the second time we try. We had technical difficulties yesterday. Uh, thank you for the computers <laughs> for facilitating this. Thank you for our listeners. Uh, the next guest we have on Wednesday will be Amr Zahar uh, at 7 p.m. Uh, looking forward for uh, him. This episode will be on uh, Dearborn Blog. It will also be posted on uh, DearbornBlog.com, on Dearborn Blog YouTube channel, 
and it will also be uh, the audio will be broadcast on the Dearborn blog uh, podcast on available on iTunes and on Stitcher for uh, Droid users. Thank you very much, Doctor. Have a great night and have a great night, all our listeners. Thank you, Sam, and uh, stay safe.